Good morning, everyone. This is Kelly Hobart from Alpaca Direct, and I'm here working on a lovely hat project. I hope that all of you are getting ready for the holiday season, if not all ready to go. I was busy wrapping some presents this morning and just smiling from ear to ear because I'm so excited about all the little kids opening their gifts and, and just letting them enjoy the time of family and fun. <laughs> so here I am. This is called the Silent Snow Hat and it's by Lisa McFetridge. Do you see how cool it is? And what's neat, let me show you one of the patterns on the back side. There are no repeats in between the patterns. It's all just one big picture of houses and hills and the moon and stars and it's beautiful. I really, really like it. So here I am. Of course, I have to change things, but I am having a great time. I decided to use some Dos Tierras in the, um, I think it's Paris Night. And then I paired that with some Sueno DK in the Ice Ice Baby. And I am doing a double knit. <laughs> So you made See? it double. Oh, it's not normally a double knit? It's not double knit. <laughs> but you did. But I love double knit because double knit is makes it a double thick hat. And I also put a little tiny brim on it. And I actually could have made a bigger brim because I think I'm going to have a little extra room that I can fill up. But let's see if I can carefully. Can you see how beautiful that is? See the Latvian braid around the bottom? Let's see if I can show you where the join is. Can you, if I go all the way around the circle, do you see where the join is? I wanted to talk about that today, about how to make your join look better. Isn't that cool? That Latvian braid looks good all the way around. Matter of fact, I had dropped my stitch marker when I first started and I went past my beginning of the round just because I never saw where the Latvian braid had joined. It looked like a regular part of the Latvian braid. And these braids are beautiful, but sometimes that join, because when you knit in the round and it's kind of a spiral that you're knitting in, instead of a straight, uh, a straight flat line, you're doing kind of a spiral as you're going up. That Latvian braid join has, it's almost like disjointed. It's like one side of the round is down here and then the other side is up here. And so to make those look like they're even is a little trick. I have a little trick for you. And maybe I can take a little time and explain that to you so that you can learn how to do it too. Because Latvian braids are lots of fun and super, super easy to do. Now this silent snow hat is a paid for pattern. And it is uh, not, not very expensive. And I'm sure that Meg has put the link for us there. Thank you, Meg. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Meg. <laughs> anyway, and Merry Christmas to all of you out there too. And I hope we have a fantastic new year. And that brings me to my point for next year or, or for next week. I'm going to be talking about my New Year's resolutions, not only for knitting, but New Year's resolutions for knitting as well as a few other items that are important to me. Lots of people coming on saying hi from Hi Minnesota, everyone. Michigan, Happy holidays. Florida, Yay. I Arizona. hope that you guys all are nice and warm and wearing your alpaca socks or something nice and warm because it is chilly outside and it's actually kind of windy, isn't it? It's windy outside oh, a little bit. It's like two miles an hour. Okay. Well, there was a little wind and I'm sitting here thinking, you know, on the prairie, it's probably blowing like a Dickens. <laughs> Anyways, um, this pattern is really fun. I really enjoyed the, the Latvian braid is always fun because it's easy to do. And you did a, and, you did a show on the pom-poms before, remember a long time ago? Yes, I did. I did um, a Technique Tuesday on uh, how to make uh, pom-poms and how you can make your own faux fur pom-poms and then how to use the pom-pom maker. Um, we had yeah. pom-poms coming out our ears. We, we did. I our... still have pom-poms in a bucket. <laughs> it's in one of my clear containers, a bunch of pom-poms. And I have not used them all up, which is kind of cool. It's neat. So every week we have a drawing. And for this last week, we had this lovely blue color, which is the winning color for last week. But let me show you what I have 
cooked up for us for this week. I was thinking that we could have a skein of Eco Puna and we could either have it in the darker colorway or the lighter colorway. And you guys choose and we can send that to the winner for next week. And this Eco Puna is by Amano Yarns. It's 100% baby alpaca and it is made in Peru. And it, again, it's a delight. It's all natural too. Yes. Oh my gosh, it's so soft in your hands. So I thought some lucky winner for next week could either get the darker color or the light color. So, what they, so you what guys they, help us vote. Do they write and then, or gray or what do they type? Just say light or dark. Okay. Yeah, light or dark is good with me. Yeah, and I, but I thought they would enjoy that yarn. So um, that was the um, little prize for next week. Now I wanted to take just a second and look at our color work charts. I also wanted to take um, just the reason why I wanted to take a look at our color work charts is I have a couple little tricks for when we have these patterns that have no specific repeats. There are some ways that you can set things up so that you can keep track of where you're at instead of getting all the way to the end of the round to find out you're off a little. <laughs> So let me show you what I've done with mine before I show you my little trick for fixing my Latvian braid. Oh, this silent snow hat is so cool. See how lovely that is? And she has um, several sizes. She has infant size, child size, adult size, and a large adult size. And I'm using the smaller size because my double knitting, when I double knit, it seems to turn out kind of big. So I'm using a little bit lighter weight yarn because she recommends worsted weight yarn. And then I'm using a little bit smaller size. So you'll see here first for my beginning of the round, I put two stitch markers because I don't have enough blue to put just pink in the marking. Um, so when I have to do that, then I just use a little hairband. And that's a hairband from Sally's Beauty Supply. You can buy like 500 for less than two bucks. If you are one of those people who lose stitch markers faster than I could say goodbye stitch markers, that is a great way to go over there because you can buy 500 and you can bounce them all over the floor and just vacuum them right up with your vacuum cleaner. <laughs> and they do great, huh, Jim? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's... Yeah, well, oh, the vacuum cleaner. It doesn't hurt the vacuum cleaner. Let's get, not get fussy, my darling. So here is my chart. And number one, because it goes all the way around and it has no repeats, what I had to do three stickies to make it go all the way across. And you can see that I'm nearly done with my pattern. And don't do what I did at the top here. I started numbering it with a permanent marker. And then I realized I had skipped one of the, <laughs> so I had to go back and fix it. That was silly. <laughs> if you're writing notes on your patterns, write them in pencil so that you can erase and not have to make a mess like I did with mine. And also you'll see this pattern chart did not come with this yellow highlighted section. What I did is I highlighted um, every other five stitches so I could keep on track so that when, and then I numbered them. So, and I have my stitch marking markers accordingly. So this is number one, two, three, four, five. And then the highlight is corresponds with between these stitch markers. So I can go, if I'm knitting right here, this is the beginning of the round. One, two, three, I'm working on my third section right here. See how that works. So that is a really easy way to be able to um, keep track of where you are when you're knitting a chart that has no defined repeats. So, and there are a lot of patterns out there that don't have defined repeats. And then um, this is just a regular color work chart. And I told you that I have chosen to do double knitting. See how you can see my building forming on the inside. It's almost completely reversible, but for sure it's gonna be a double, warm hat. And then you'll see right here, I put this little fuzzy and that marks number 10. So from the beginning of the round to here is 10. So it marks it right here. And then I can count either forward or backwards. You could do that on, you could put another kind of stitch marker for maybe every at five, 10 and 15 or something like that for you easier to count. But it's totally up to you. It's just what I do. So I hope that helps you um, 
gives you a few little tips about how to keep track on a chart that has no defined repeats. So now let's take one second and again, take a look at our Latvian braid. And the Latvian braid here, you'll see that the Latvian braid has these series. You're holding your yarn in front and you're either bringing it underneath the old stitch or above the old stitch, whichever you do, depending on which, which leg you're doing. So in the beginning, if you do it underneath, you when you do another stitch, you go underneath. Then on the next round, you'll go over the top and then it'll make this side and then that side, right? So we have these little pearl bumps and these little strands of yarn here catch that color. So if it's a it's a gray bump or a light colored bump, then the strand will be catching the light color of yarn. So it has it like that. So now let's take a, take a look at the beginning of the round here. Here here it is right here. I've done nothing to it. It is absolutely just. Um, actually, no, I did, I did fix this one. Sorry. I fixed this one just by making a little bit of a pearl bump right here and then carrying that strand of yarn over. So let, let's take a look at this little sample that I did where I did nothing. And then, then we can see if we can fix it together. See how it's off just a little bit. It seems like here, this one's perfect. That one is okay, but you can't really see the pearl bump that much. It's hidden down in here. And then right here you have a green bump. And then there's another, there's this green strand right here. And then you have this strand right here. So what you wanna do is try and make this go, you, you want this tan strand to come over to this bump and then come back to here and kind of go over that, bringing that down and into the position. So let's see if we can grab our tan yarn. And you can either use this tail, which is the when I very first started, or you can, if you're not going to be using the light colored yarn anymore, you could cut that one. Either way, let's use the one that is not cut just for the fun of it and see what we can do with that. So again, my goal is to kind of do like duplicate stitch, but duplicate stitch of a Latvian braid duplicate stitch. So here's what I'm trying to recreate this and with this pearl bump in the center using the light colored yarn. So let's look and see if we can do it. And also, if you're doing it on the inside of your hat and you're gonna use this yarn, be careful of how you start because you don't want to take the light color and put a big funky looking thing right into your hat if you're gonna have it basically be reversible, right? So we have to be careful about how we bring that around so that it looks good. And I think, that what I can do is just do this. You see how I have my gray strand is coming out of here, right here. So what I wanna do is actually, I'm gonna bring it around. Do you see how I'm going around the back of this green strand right here? Just to kind of stabilize it so it doesn't um, sink into the, um, we don't want it to kind of unravel, if you know what I mean. There, okay. So now I've, I've brought the yarn up into the position. Let's take a look at it. So here it is right here, and I've brought it up into here. So I'm gonna flip it this other way, and we're gonna take a look at this. The strand that we want to try and recreate is we want a gray strand that goes down. We, okay, so we want to, let's see if we can pull this right in here. I'm looking, I wanna create this gray strand and maybe I have to go up into here, into that slot. Now let's look on the back and make sure we're not making a mess out of things. Oops. 
and we were going to get stranded. We were going to carry it right across that strand. We don't want to do that. Try that again. Come back on over here. Okay. So I have my yarn right there and we're going to, oops, what I don't want to do is split that strand. So let me make sure I'm not splitting anything. There, that's better. Okay. And then see this one, this bump right here? I go right into here and don't pull it too tight. Okay. Uh, what I don't really like though, this, see this right here? See that strand right there? I would like to see if I can pull it and bring it with me when I go through that loop. Let's see what we can do with it. Sometimes you have to just kind of experiment a little bit and see what looks good. There. Now, bring that under there. I do not like that too much. Let's see. That, this strand right here, I wish I could bring that one. Let's see. Maybe I can bring that top piece. I'm going to try now and see if I can do something here. And I'll show you what I'm thinking. So what we're trying to do is get this white strand to come down here and play well, go back into position with this. This, yeah, we can't really, that's the strand that's kind of stuck there. So we can't really do anything with that guy. Now let's take this out and see what we can do. Okay, we have, I think what I'm going to have to do is put that darning needle back on there and see what we can do. All right, let's see if we can go underneath here and get away from that white one a little bit. And maybe we can just go right over the top of it. That one goes there. We want to flip that out a little. Let's see if we can go right over the top of this guy. And there. Okay. And then go right. down into here, making sure not to get caught on anything in the back. Okay. I want to see if I can see this leg right here. I would like that little guy to go forward just a little bit more. So I'm going to see if I can bring it forward a little more. Let him go over one more stitch and not get caught in the back and see how it does. This is fixing a join on the left, right? Yeah. Well, you sometimes have to go through it a little bit more than one time. And let's see. The trick is this that white strand, this white strand is being a pain. And so it's not wanting to, let me look at this one and see what happened here, if that white strand got in the way. Maybe when I knitted it, I did, here's the beginning of the round, no? Okay, so on this one, the blue strand, 
was over the top. But it didn't, see how this white one um, went straight in there? Let's look and see what we did on the back side. Yeah. See, I just took the blue strand that was right in there and it, it played well. Now let's look and see if we can do it here. This little guy, that white strand, I don't know if it was, if it got knit funny or, because um, sometimes they, or maybe I needed the green. Uh-oh, now I got it so I can, let's see. Ah. Nope. Where'd you go? You have to, now sometimes when you take it out, it doesn't, it's stuck on the back there. Doesn't want to come out. Well, I guess what we could do, if we had a longer tail, we could use a green color and go over it. But I just don't, um, I don't like this strand right here. And so maybe you could go back here and see if we can get, where was that? And of course I split that stitch on purpose so that I could get it in there, but it's probably a bad idea. One second, sweetie. Yeah, so you can see on this finish work, sometimes you have to do it more than once. And my, my dilemma here is this white strand. And that white strand, if we could figure out how to pull it so it's down there like that it would play better but you have to get the you know you could possibly do a duplicate stitch right over the top of this pearl bump and make another pearl bump that pulls that right into place and have better luck with that let's see yeah of course i have messed up my yarn so I can't see where my strand is coming out of but I would say if you get stuck in this kind of dilemma you can either keep fiddling with it or you can see if you can get it to go back into but remember every time you do this you're kind of tying it into a knot and so I would say that just going over the top of this little guy and turning him, putting him into this pearl bump right here, we'll pull him back into more into position. Mm -hmm. But do you see how I pulled it into it, the, put that pearl bump there and it kind of put it back into it. It's not exactly perfect. I don't know if I, like that totally but if you look do you see how this is just and um, this right here is part of another knit stitch because the setup um round for this actual latvian braid is a knit, knit one in the light color knit one in the dark color all the way around but that's basically what you want to do you're kind of doing duplicate stitch but you're doing duplicate stitch in latvian braid isn't that cool but it makes a really nice join. But sometimes, like even with me, I have to do it several times sometimes. The trick with doing all of your finish work is don't be afraid to take it out. Don't be afraid to try it again. And if it doesn't look right and you're getting frustrated because you're going, I, want, I know how I want it to be and it's just not behaving, then go take a coffee break. <laughs> and come back to it. Because sometimes just a little bit of a break and you come back and boom, you get it. <laughs> so it's really super fun. And I love, you know, I, I take all of these challenges, at, well, these skills as a challenge, right? Yeah. And I don't get frustrated with it. I get even, I tell myself, you know, I can do this. 
And so I'll get up, take a coffee break, walk around a minute, and I go right back to it. And if I have to rip the whole thing out to get it right, right? How mm -hmm. many times have I ripped stuff out? Um, like 50 million times. And I just say, it's okay. It's lovely yarn, and I get to use it more than once. <laughs> it's cheap knitting, <laughs> right? So it's totally fun. So um, you guys, don't forget to tell me who you would – what color you would like me to give the lucky winner for next week? The light color or the dark color? And we can get some of this lovely Amano Eco Puna in someone's hands. They will love it. It's so completely soft. I love this yarn. And the winner for this week got this lovely sapphire blue colorway. And let's see who the winner was for this week. Oh, Jim, you always hook me up on this. Rebecca McCormick. Yay! Rebecca, you got you have some encore. Maybe you can make a cute little project with this. I'm stockings, telling you. Right? Oh man, I made stockings out of this and I'm working on my third stocking now and it is so fantastic. I should have brought it for you. They are turning out so lovely and I'm so glad that Meg gave me the great idea to use this encore for stockings because for some reason the encore is super light, huh Jim? It's not a, it doesn't create a a heavy stocking it creates a light and fluffy stocking so it's totally fantastic so yay rebecca mccormick congratulations you got yourself a couple skeins of this encore and all you have to do is contact customer service at alpaca direct and we'll get it in the mail to you oh actually more precisely jim usually gets it in the mail for no, us no i i have someone else they're going to do that for now oh so they are oh nice well jen is awesome too you'll you would totally love her oh i forgot to tell show them can i show that do i have time for one more little tiny mm -hmm. skill Oh, okay. I'll save it for next week. I wanted to show you this really easy provisional cast on that just requires a chain stitch and a regular crochet hook, but we'll save it for next week. And then you'll get to see my finished hat. So that'll be totally fantastic. And like I said, I'm going to be working on my new year's resolutions, not only for knitting, but just in general. So I would like to share a couple of them with you. And there's nothing um, that gets you more motivated when it comes to your new year's resolutions than sharing them with your friends. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to that next week. And I hope that you guys are enjoying the holiday season and staying safe. And I will see you next Tuesday.